everyone. I'm going to cover chainsaw processing for bowl blanks today. So first few things, things that I always have with me when I'm going to do sawmill work or chainsaw work in this case. Uh, got my chainsaw well sharpened, hearing protection, eye protection, and then a couple extras. I use the bar chain protector as a straight edge uh, is an extra bonus. This measures five and a half inches wide, uh, which for a smaller bowl blank for me is about perfect. By the time you uh, add the chalk width to both sides, it's just about perfect. So that cuts down on uh, having to have other things with you. Um, so either sidewalk chalk works great or uh, lumber, lumber crayon, whatever you want to call these. Um, I should have uh, chainsaw chaps on. I don't. Um, I forgot them at home, which, uh, yeah, my bad. Um, chainsaw chaps, if you don't know what they are, they're made of a special fabric that when the chain, or if the chain was to hit them, it shreds and tangles up the chain really, really quickly and it stops it. You might get a little cut, but you're not going to get horribly mangled. So, uh, all these things are really important. I will say before I start that if you've never used a chainsaw, I really, really suggest that you find somebody local that is great with a chainsaw, either somebody that fells trees for a living, uh, you know, tree service, a logger. Um, if you call around, I'm sure you'll find somebody that'll be willing to sort of uh, guide you through it in person. Um, it's a lot better to learn in person. So. This is just for a little bit of a how-to, how I do it, and then an explanation of what I'm doing it while I'm doing it. So, um, to pardon, pardon my, uh, my appearance, I've been doing sawmill work all day, and I look like a drowned rat that's been uh, uh, tossed in sawdust. <laughs> so, all right. Anyhow, um, got some black walnut here. This happens to be about 15 inches in diameter, which for me, well, it's actually about 16, but uh, I generally don't want to count all the sapwood. So, I don't know if you can see that well from there, but there is a crack from the pit, which is normal. I'm just drawing that up there. So, the bowl blank, or the bowl itself, this will be the rim, and that'll be the foot. Um, so, I'm going to make about a 14 inch bowl. Um, I'm going to cut this into a 15 inch bolt and then I'll noodle that bolt. So first off, I'm gonna cut this, measure it. Fifteen inches. All right. Now that we have our bolt cut, it's as simple as staying away from the crack. And the further you are away from the pith, the safer you're going to be to avoid crack bowls. see this will be the foot of the bowl and there's the rim you can reverse that um, you could do the foot there and the rim this way but you're gonna limit the size of the bowl depending on the log now if you have huge logs it really doesn't matter but this is the more it's more efficient uh, to make the foot on the small end so now this is where I see a lot of people making harder work you know, you'll see people cutting directly into the end grain with their saw this way. Um, you can do it, but cutting into end grain is very hard. It's hard on the saw, it's hard on your body, and it takes forever. So you're much better off flipping it onto its side, and it's basically it's called noodling. So you're going to be cutting along with the grain, and you're going to pull out big strands of grain, which is, you know, you call it, they call it noodling, so it ends up looking sort of like spaghetti noodles. Um, so I'm going to flip this on its side. All right, hopefully you can see this. So I've got a couple of blocks here that I'm going to carefully set this on. That way 
it will keep it off the ground. It'll keep it off the ground so you don't ground your chainsaw. You don't want to bury your chainsaw in the dirt. That'll make it dull just about instantly. Okay, next part. I don't do this, but you could. If you are, if you have a good eye and you're comfortable to just find a straight line and to keep the cuts parallel, you could mark the other side of the log. I don't. Um, I also don't do a lot of chainsaw work anymore. I use the sawmill for 95% of my uh, bowl blank processing. But um, so I'm gonna make the first cut, remove this and remove that to keep it all balanced. And then I'm gonna take each cut in the center here down to just before it cuts through. And then after I have it cut down there, I'll finish it off. But that way it all stays balanced and stays up perched on this little, uh, the blocks I have it set up on, so. chainsaw work done. Normally I would do this with a compass or a pre-cut uh, pre circle. Which I'll show that um, in one of the next videos. But uh, for now, let's pretend this is what we're doing. So I'm going to draw a perfect circle. <laughs> so there's our bowl blank. Now if you have a bandsaw, which I do, I would cut this out on the bandsaw. Um, you can if you don't have a bandsaw which if you're getting started and need to put together a shop, I highly recommend skipping the bandsaw for now and just with the chainsaw, just come around and take chunks away until it's, you know, pretty round. And then you can mount it to the lathe and away you go. So pretty simple and straightforward. If you're fine that the chainsaw is not cutting straight for you, um, chances are it is not sharpened properly. Uh, when you're noodling, you should get these nice long strands that cut pretty clean and you can see the surface here is is really pretty clean i could you know you could true this up with a uh, a joiner planer <laughs> if you wanted to with one light pass and it would be completely flat so um all right now that i've got that covered well here is the center piece which is actually quarter sawn you can see the growth rings are running perpendicular to the face um, if this was big enough, I would save it for spindle blanks, which actually probably could do spindle blanks on this side and do like pepper mills at some point. Um, probably get a couple on this side of the pith and you know, that's a little bit narrow for that. This will probably be firewood. Um, if you have a bigger tree, a bigger log, um, I make my everyday bowls, which are you know eight by two and a half basically. I make them out of this cut so the foot would be here and then that would be the rim up this way. Um, this is a little bit small for that but a um, couple ideas what to do with the center cut. I know some people will save this for end grain cutting boards um, or you could do you know you could do a serving tray just cut the pith out. This isn't drawing very well but you get the idea you could you know plane this down once it's dry and make a nice little cheese board or serving tray all kinds of things you can make with uh, little projects um, now for a couple of little safety things um, the big one 
is uh, oops. when you're cutting, you always want to be very careful what's on the other side of what you're cutting. Um, if you hit this tip of the bar while you're cutting on something, it's going to kick up very quickly. Um, you know, I'll do it occasionally um, if I'm just nipping the corner off something, but I'm ready for it to sort of kick up a bit. Um, you can, however, use the top side of this to do a little quick cut, but if you come around the front a little too much, it's gonna kick up. If you're not ready for it, and you uh, your, the saw is going full speed, um, you can get very, very hurt. Um, I've, I've not seen it personally, but I've talked to a few people that, um, you know, they're tired, they're working out in the woods and they're bucking something up and they, they slip and they're not holding on to it. This bar comes up and hits them across the chest and uh, it's not pretty. So uh, once again, if you aren't really comfortable with a saw or have never used one, really, really recommend finding somebody local to get you started and help. But uh, this should give you a good idea of how to process blanks uh, in an efficient way. So. If anybody has any questions, leave them in the comments and I will answer them as best I can. Um, just be safe. So hope this helps everybody. Uh, the next few videos will start moving a little bit quicker is now all of the, the parts that I'll be covering are in my shop, which is at my house, as opposed to out in the woods where my sawmill is. Um, so I'm, I'm shooting for doing a video a week at this point out. So uh, next one up I'll do bandsaw work just because I have a bandsaw and then how I mount a ball blank to the lathe and then I'll progress through all the tools and, and steps that I go through. So anyhow, I hope this is helpful to everybody. Take care.